Jessica Whitaker here. I am a New York City based photographer and today we are not in New York City. We are out in Western Washington. Today's video is five posing mistakes that you might be making in your photography. I have definitely made these mistakes at the beginning of my photography career and journey and I want to set you guys up for success. So whether you've been shooting for a month, a year or 10 years, I encourage you guys to watch this because there might be something that you can adjust with your posing. I'm a huge fan of natural posing and really adding a lot of movements to my shots. I love capturing people in their natural environment and making them feel as comfortable as possible. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and I'll talk to you guys about them at the very end. Today I'm shooting on a Canon 5D Mark III and then a 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. If we could zoom in dramatically on my face, we would. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, you're good. I'm really excited to shoot on this camera body and lens combo. All the photos from this photo shoot will be linked down below in the description box on my website as well as a 15% off code for my online photography workshop. So if you guys like this video, you're going to love my workshop, especially if you are wanting to take the leap in 2019 with your photography business and market to dream clients in your own backyard. There's over seven hours of video content and this offer will be around for quite some time. So go check out the link down below for that. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible learning platform with over 25,000 different classes in photography, design, business, and more. All of the classes are taught by industry leaders and professionals, so you know you are getting an incredible education without leaving the comfort of your home. Whether you want to fuel your creativity, your curiosity, try a new hobby, or brush up on the talents that you already have, Skillshare is for you. Premium membership gives you access to all of these classes in this incredible incredible resource. Skillshare is also extremely affordable. Annual membership is about $10 a month. Join more than 7 million creators on Skillshare. The first 500 people who click the link down below in the description box will get access to two months of free premium membership. I highly encourage you guys to check it out below no matter what stage in the photography game you are at we could all learn and grow and expand and skillshare is an incredible resource to do so so don't miss out on this opportunity click the link down below okay so today's model is my wonderful friend val Val, can tell them about yourself. You have so much yeah. cool things happening. So um, my name is Valerie once again. I am a photographer, a videographer on the side. Um, I do marketing and I also run my own business for my presets. Yes. I share a lot of Instagram tips on content creation on my Instagram page. So be sure to check that out. Yes, definitely. You guys might recognize her from my very first photography tutorial <laughs> three years ago. So ago. we finally are going to do another video together and I'm so so yeah. so excited be sure to go give her a follow i'll have her instagram linked down below and let's get started so since it's so bright and sunny outside we're gonna start out with some backlit photos so um val i'm gonna have you stand kind of against these so my first tip this is so oh my gosh val yes so since we have all this beautiful light coming through with your hair maybe you kind of play with your hair but one big tip i have for you guys when it comes to hair is you don't want to be pulling um too far out like especially on the top what you want to do when it comes to playing with hair is you want to kind of play with the very ends of it this will let the light naturally stream through without creating any weird shape you don't want to distort that shape yes beautiful movement beautiful and even i'm gonna have you lean forward slightly into the lens yeah because i'm shooting from below this will add movement beautiful val and then kind of play with your hair again just on the ends to kind of bring that light through yes So as you can see, whenever you're kind of leaning forward, that adds a lot of movement to the shot too. Perfect. Um, that, uh, wait, this, perfect of you. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll just get a few more like this, but oh my gosh, I'm, lo okay, I'm dying over the 1.2, Sophia. I need to add this to my cart like when it came <laughs> Amazing, because I was a huge fan of the 50 millimeter for so long until I switched to that Sigma. You guys, 50 millimeters back in action. <laughs> The next tip I have for you guys when it comes to posing naturally and adding more movement to your shots is wherever there's a limb, you want to bend it. So for example, um, instead of having your arm straight down to the side, you got, kind of want to add a little bit of bend to that elbow. If you have your knees kind of straight, um, it's not as flattering. It kind of looks a little bit stiff, but if you can kind of bend the knees, maybe turn the knee in a little bit, extend the foot out, 
anytime you can create a shape with your body, even just a slight one, you wanna do that. Mm -hmm. Now, brings me to my next tip though. If you do kind of bend that arm, you might see in a lot of photos, especially with bridal portraits and bridal party photos and specifically, um, you might see that people kind of want to just naturally press their arm to the side. This isn't so flattering, not only because I have two band-aids on my arm, <laughs> but also because when you have any body parts squished against your body, it obviously will kind of make it look a little bit bigger than it is just because you're pressing it against your body. So instead you want to kind of bring that arm away from your body. This creates shape too because then we're gonna be able to have your arm be the size that it naturally is. Um, and then with that though, you wanna bend that elbow. So this just makes everything look nice and just natural how you actually do look. A lot of times people look at photos of themselves and they're not happy yeah. with it because of how they're being posed, yeah. So anytime you can really elevate that. Now, one thing too, this is the last little tip in this bit, is if you are gonna have that side shot where you do have your arm covering your waist, you wanna extend your arm away from the body so we see that snatched waistline. No matter what body type you have, if you can kind of pull that arm away from you, um, out and away, and really emphasize your curves and your waistline, it's gonna look beautiful. We always are looking for those natural shapes. And again, she's bending the elbow, stay just like that for me. Can you close your eyes and take a deep breath now? We have this beautiful light now. Ooh, and now it's a little bit more subtle. So we're gonna do some lower portraits. Perfect. So I have talked about leaning forward in photos before. I just think it looks really pretty, a little bit more editorial almost. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We have this cord and it's literally 10 feet long and causes so many traffic incidents. So if you guys have um, a, a link for a microphone that's wireless, let me know in the comments below. Now, one thing when it comes to hands, you guys, you never wanna kind of have the hand, um, the full palm facing the camera. You never wanna have the palm just facing the camera like this. It doesn't look flattering. Instead, always turn that wrist in, show off the fingernails, show off the rings, whatever it might be a part of the hand. This creates a little bit more shape. So instead of having the hand even just like up here, do you wanna put your hand up there real quick? See how this is just kind of like, almost like a blob. You wanna just turn it in, that creates a lot of shape and detail for your poses. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. It's not a huge deal if you do it or if your client does it. It's a tip that you can easily, easily implement into your client shoots. Perfect, Val, these are beautiful. I wanna do a tip for you guys when it comes to full body shots. So um, this is again, whenever there's a limb, we wanna bend it. But when it comes to wearing skirts or dresses, we have a really great opportunity to add even more movement to that shot with the actual skirt. And the first thing that you can do is playing around with the very bottom with your fingertips. So you can kind of um, bring your hips side to side and then kind of puff the skirt out just slightly with the very bottom of it. We always want to bring the skirt out to the side so it flows naturally like this, not picking it up where it's gonna kind of not be that yeah, nice draped. Yeah, you want it to look like it's windswept. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start out with some photos like that and the way that again, you can kind of add even more of that movement is by bringing your hips side to side. Now when you're taking these photos, um, it will take quite a few shots to get that. Right one, because there obviously is a lot of variables with these kind of movement shots. Not only are you focusing on the model having getting the shot with her eye open and the hair is looking nice, but also that the skirt is moving. So you will have to take quite a few. We have her head framed underneath that mountain. Now, even though the horizon line isn't the mountain, um, I think that this is just a really nice natural way to incorporate intentional framing and composition into your photos instead of having it where the mountain is cutting through her head we have it right underneath so i'll kind of talk more about that a little bit later on in depth okay gorgeous yeah put both your hands up again now i'm framing her right underneath there's even a little peak in that mountain that fits her head and her um her arms perfectly and have you scoot this way just a tiny bit perfect 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 bring your hands both back up again yeah, okay, so on these photos on the screen, um, her hands are right under tucked that mountain, so. Perfect, Val, these are gorgeous. 
Let me do a couple close-up shots of you. Whenever there's a little detail or a scarf or something by the neck, um, instead of bringing the whole thing to the side, probably just fluff the top part of this bow. So then we're still kind of keeping with the shape. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna kind of bring the hair to the side. One thing, um, a huge thing actually, when it comes to hair with clients, models, whatever it might be, um, you always wanna make sure it's clear of the neck. We don't have a dark piece of hair going across the neck like this, especially since her hair is dark and the clothes are lighter. Same thing for if your model had light hair and then something dark on, it just contrasts a little bit too much and it's very distracting. And this is a great way. Mm -hmm. Your client will not be annoyed about you fixing their hair. They will thank you for it. Even like this bit of hair, I'm gonna bring it to the front. Lean forward slightly for me. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, love. Okay, so stay just like that. I'm gonna bring this hair forward just because it's on the um, on the shoulder. Perfect. Loving the way that this Mark III is shooting though. It's so good. Beautiful. And then again, I'm cutting, kind of like putting her head underneath the mountains whenever I can. My next tip for you guys is when it comes to portraits is you don't want there to be any distracting elements coming out of your subject's head. In this case, there's nothing too distracting that would be like growing out of her head per se, but I'm thinking of maybe like a power line or a pole or like a kind of a skinnier tree. Anything that could kind of take away from your face that looks like it's growing out of the top of your head or your shoulder, we want to eliminate when we can. That's something I see a lot in photography is there'll be this beautiful, beautiful shot of like a bride and groom, but there's something, yeah, coming out of the head that looks a little bit distracting. So it's a super easy fix for you guys, whether it's in post-processing yeah. with the clone stamp tool or just by kind of shifting the camera away. In this instance, I'm not seeing anything too distracting. Mm -hmm. Rather, I'm embracing the mountains by placing her and like tucking her underneath them and it's framing her really nicely. Let's do some cool ones with shooting through some objects. So let's, oh, do you want to grab the butterflies? Yeah, let's do it. So a fun thing I like to really do with portraits, I'll just take one. I'll, so one really fun one thing I love to do with portraits especially just to add a little bit more interest is to shoot through an object so whether that's a ziploc bag or a piece of sheer fabric or these little butterflies that we have these are made of feathers so they're kind of um, transparent in a way it'll let light in and it's the same color kind of tone as her dress we'll do some backlit portraits again but this time do you mind kind of squatting <laughs> if that's okay and then I'm gonna do some closer up ones. Now, the reason I have her squatting is just so that we have a little bit more diffused light coming uh -huh. through and we have more um, more in the background. It's not just the blank sky. It adds a little bit more depth. One thing you can also do with this trick is kind of block out any, um, you can kind of use it to block out anything too. So I don't want to get the street. So what I'll do is I will use this butterfly to cover that street and give me a little bit more, still a little bit of that shine, but kind of take away from that distracting element of the street. So good, okay, cool. So one other thing, I am definitely make this mistake um, and I have to remind myself, you wanna keep the shoulders fully in the shot or any kind of limb. Um, I think it's better to be able to have more of the body in it when you're shooting than less, so then you can crop it in a little bit. But sometimes if you have one shoulder fully in and then one where it's slightly cropped, it doesn't look as nice. So that's just a little bit for um, when you're actually shooting, it's better to have more than less. Whenever you're shooting full body, especially where you can see the horizon line, you wanna make sure that your photos are aligned properly. So you can use the grid feature on your camera where the grid will appear on your screen. I encourage you guys to use that grid if you have a hard time figuring out um, what is exactly straight. You can, of course, make these adjustments later in post-processing, which I highly recommend you to do. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen a beautiful, beautiful photograph of a full body shot family or a group or something like that where it's a little bit off a little bit wonky those kind of details especially really make a huge difference so go into post-processing it's super easy to line your photos but if you can do it in your camera using the grid um, the better and you can definitely train your eye to do that as well it looks really really nice this is gonna be so pretty come on guys <laughs> come on with me the lasso oh this is pretty even just like kind of walking back yes 
Ooh, this is such, I'm love, <laughs> sorry. I'm loving the Mark III though. Also you guys, when it comes to shooting through objects, it's hard to do when there's not light coming through. So I'm not using the butterfly right now. Ooh, this is really pretty Val. I'll have you actually scoot out just a tiny, tiny bit. So one way that I am really paying attention to the alignment is just by holding my lens also parallel to the ground. Um, I don't wanna tilt this lens, especially with a 50 millimeter lens. With the 35, it's a bit different, but with this 50, I don't wanna be pointing my lens down like this for these photos, because I don't wanna get a bunch of this ground. I wanna have my lens more parallel to the ground and a little bit lower. This is a way where I can kind of capture it more at what my eye truly sees, um, and I can get more detail and she's kind of framed underneath again, this little mountain just slightly. It's about an inch above her head in the shot, but I do think that it is looks really nice. Still a little detail. Oh my gosh, love, love, love. Okay, stay just like that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we're gonna shoot, oops. We're gonna shoot through the skirt, and this is something you can do also with a veil. Yeah, for weddings, yes. Incredible. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, love, 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 love. Lift your face, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lean this way a little bit. So like I said, these are a little um, underexposed, but it's, again, better to be under than over with backlit shots. I can like preserve mm -hmm. more of it. Love it, it's so good. Oh wait, can you hang your head like that again? Stay just like that. I'm gonna adjust the hair. And then to all kind of like mm -hmm. come down like that. Yeah, and then Yeah. Okay, I think we definitely got it. <laughs> Okay, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something. How are you feeling, Val? I'm really great. I love the results. You are so good. I Thank you it. so much. <laughs> be sure to go give Val a follow on Instagram. Her Instagram and presets will be linked down below in the description box. Thank you so much to Sophie for filming this <laughs> for <laughs> us. We will have Sophie's info linked down below. Go grab your two months of free premium membership down below, as well as a 15% off code for my online photography workshop. If you like this kind of stuff, you're gonna love the workshop. Yeah. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.